untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-white flyer stack as voted on by my lovely supporters on Patreon, featuring Ineos, the Gale Force as our commander. So this deck is going to be playing a ton of flying creatures to make best use of Ineos' skill set. Ineos a 5 mana 4 for flyer and for 2 and a blue-white hybrid. Attacking creatures with flying get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Now trying to decipher this next part when you read it can feel like having a stroke, so let me paraphrase. If you attack with 3 or more flying creatures, you can exchange control of a non-land permanent you control with a non-land permanent the opponent controls. Fun fact, this ability also gets around hexproof since it doesn't actually target anything, so you can even steal a hexproof permanent from the opponent. So even though Ineos doesn't have an entered battlefield ability, it can kind of feel like you have one if you can attack with three flying creatures the turn you play Ineos. And if the opponent has a big flying or reach creature, we can still attack into it, since we'll be able to exchange control with that creature before they get a chance to block, thanks to Ineos' ability. And that's also the reason why we don't have a ton of removal in the deck, just because Ineos' ability takes care of most problems. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, we want plenty of cheap flyers to make best use of Ineos' ability, make it easier to attack with three flying creatures. And that also gives us a cheap creature that we can give to the opponent in exchange for their best card. So at one mana, we've got Fairy Guide Mother, which we can also use the Adventure for to give a creature plus two plus one until end of turn. Healer's Hawk, one one flyer with lifelink. Loyal Pegasus cannot attack or block alone, but is a 2-1. Rustwing Falcon, trusty Rusty, a 1-2 flyer. Siren Storm Tamer can be sacrificed to protect one of our creatures. Spectral Sailor can draw extra cards in the late game. Hope of Gearapur is easy to cast thanks to the generic mana cost, so makes it easier to curve out, and can also be sacrificed to prevent the opponent from casting a non-creature spell, which can potentially save us from a sweeper effect. Then at 2 mana we've got a Rally of Wings as one of our few non-creature spells, untaps all our creatures, and then our flying creatures get plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, so it can be a great finisher. Ether Swooper makes 2 energy when it enters the battlefield, and we can spend 2 energy when the Swooper attacks to make a 1-1 Servo token, which we can then maybe exchange with Inyaz's ability, so we've got something to give away that we don't really care about. Favorable Winds gives our flying creatures plus 1 plus 1. We've got Lofty Denial as our only counter spell in the deck. Thieving Skydiver can also potentially steal an artifact from the opponent, and since almost everyone's playing Arcane Signet, most decks will have at least one target. Then we've got Warkite Marauder, which can shrink something down when it attacks, so it can potentially get rid of big flying blockers that the opponent might have. Skycat Sovereign, of course, great in a flying deck, can also make flying tokens. And then Watcher of the Spheres makes our flyers one cheaper, and can also get plus one plus one whenever we play a flyer. Arcane Signet for a bit of ramp and mana fixing. And then Winged Words for 2 mana can draw 2 cards as long as we control a flyer. Brazen Borrower can first use the Adventure to bounce something and then a 3-1 flyer afterwards. And Gust of Wind for 2 mana if we control a flyer can bounce a non-land permanent and draw a card. Then at 3 mana we've got a bit of built-in protection with Skybonder and Kira Great Glass Spinner, which protect us from spot removal spells. Empyrean Eagle gives our creatures plus 1 plus 1. Warden of Evo's Isle gives our creatures a discount. Serendib Freed, just a big flyer, 3-4 that deals 1 damage to us each turn. Aviation Pioneer, similar to our Aether Swooper, it's a 1-2 that makes a 1-1 Thopter, so we don't mind giving away the Pioneer with Ineas' ability and keep the Thopter token. We've got Aerial Responder as a 2-3 Flying Vigilance lifelink. Executioner makes two creatures in one card, so also very synergistic with Ineas, can also use it as removal. And Archon of Amiria gives us a bit of built-in disruption, making the opponent's non-basic lands come into play tapped, and also limits players to casting only one spell each turn, which still synergizes with our flash creatures, which we can still play in the opponent's turn. At first I had more of these Hate Bear style creatures in the deck, like Hushbringer at 2 mana, and then Avon Mind Sensor and Vryn Wingmare at 3, but there were a few nombos in the deck, we had a few creatures with ETB effects for Hushbringer, and cards like Depose Deploy and Tolerance Invocation, which were a nombo with Vryn Wingmare. And then at 4 mana, of course, Invocation and Deposed Deploy are excellent, since they make two creatures for just one card, which is very synergistic with Ineos. And then Dungeon Geist gives us a bit of removal, tapping down a creature until the Geist leaves the battlefield. And then at 5 mana, of course, we don't want too many 5 drops, since we already have Ineos at 5. But we've got Steel Plume Marshal from Jumpstart, a 3-3 flyer, that when it 
attacks gives our other attacking creatures with flying plus two plus two until end of turn and then we've got more removal with angel of sanctions that can also be embalmed out of the graveyard and then last but not least sephara sky's blade which we can play for just one mana if we tap four untapped creatures with flying we control and gives our flying creatures indestructible as well as being a seven seven flying lifelink so a great way to potentially beat sweeper effects and then in our mana base we've got emiria's call as the only fancy card that can also be cast for seven mana to make two flying angel tokens and then nine planes and nine islands a few dual lands the mana base isn't great in a blue white aggro deck since we don't have access to sea chrome coast and we're still waiting for the blue white pathway in kaldheim but hopefully we'll get those soon but for now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does all right we're on the draw facing a Jeruda doom of depths deck and uh, yeah, I mean, our hands, it's not the worst. We can play Falcon to enable Winged Words and Denial. Denial's gonna be very useful at countering Jeruda. And hopefully the Winged Words will draw us into more cheap flyers. So probably not gonna play Signet on two, and instead on turn three we can play Signet and have a two mana spell available. All right, opponents got their own signets. Warden could be nice. I think we still winged wards here. Hope of Garapur I can play for free once we play Warden too. So I've got a few options. Maybe next turn I will play Warden plus Hope. Depending on the situation. For now, Agadim, the Undercrypt tapped. Opponent deciding what to do next. So, Jiruda played as a commander and not as a companion. And yeah, Feed the Swarm takes out Falcon. So now my Lofty Denial is not super effective. So I guess we will play Warden plus Hope. And then next turn I can maybe go Signet plus keep up Denial to counter Jiruda. Could also play Ineas, but we're not going to be attacking with three creatures yet. So Signet Pass seems most prudent. There's nothing amazing for me to steal with Inaz's ability at the moment. Alright, they can have Atris. Well, well, well. All those cards are problematic. I guess we can give them Massacre Worm, just because it's more expensive so it's easier to counter with Lofty Denial, as opposed to Bontu's Last Reckoning which they might be able to play alongside another counter spell or some other devastating effect. So let's give the Massacre Worm face up. Two cards face down. Right, opponent took the Worm. And then... Yeah, I think it's just... Uh, I mean, I could also play Ineos, and then still have Lofty Denial up. Sure. And then next turn we get to trigger Ineos already. I should probably just fetch now, to be safe. Sometimes it's also safer to tap Arcane Signet and leave lands untapped, which are more difficult for the opponent to interact with. Alright, they're just gonna kill Ineos, fair enough. I uh, don't think I can afford to counter that. Next one we'll just play Pioneer and then... Keep up Denial once again, hopefully find a bit more action since we're flooding a bit. Spark Double can copy Atris. More sweepers.
our opponent took the lanes. Alright, Sephara could be a nice one too. Doesn't help against Massacre Worm, since that's gonna get around indestructible, but I could play it for 6 mana. Doesn't leave up Lofty Denial though. Could replay Ineons, but it also doesn't keep up Denial, so I think we just Pioneer. Attack. And then next turn we can uh, potentially do both. Opponent is keenly aware that we're holding a counter spell. Alright, so here I could play Ineal still have Lofty Denial up and then exchange control of Pioneer for Atris. Again, probably should have tapped Signet instead of a land, in case they have like a bounce spell and then go to their second main phase to play Massacre Worm. But yeah, we are threatening lethal next turn, with Ineos being able to pump our flyers. And our opponent's not having quite enough mana to pay for Lofty Denial, although next turn they would have been able to. So again, the reason why we gave them Worm instead of Bontu's Last Reckoning. And Gearhawk, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll counter that too. And hope they don't have anything else. Imperial Eagle. I guess we can play. We can swap our Cane Signets for fun. Alright, sweet. Close game here against Geruda. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing the dreaded niv Reborn deck. Our hand's not bad. We've got a bit of protection against spot removal. And some nice flyers here. Turn one temple. And we'll be looking for eventually fourth land, maybe... More flyers that get a discount from Warden. I think I'll take the island. Make sure we can play any else. Potentially even turn 4 thanks to Warden. So cards we don't want to see out of the opponent's deck. Something like a Deafening Clarion or Solar Blaze sweepers that can get rid of our creatures. Thought Erasure. Can take one of our 3 drops but we still have a backup. Right, takes Warden, so probably means they don't have too much spot removal in hand. Uro is fine. So they're still missing red mana. Now Gust of Wind is a sorcery, unfortunately. So their removal is going to cost two more if it targets our flyers. Uh, there's their red mana, but it's tapped. So no nif it just yet. A rally of Wings is interesting. 
Yeah, I should probably just play Ineos. And mortify my enchantment. All right, that one I can't really counter here. So if they just play Niv Mizzet, I could steal it with Ineos's ability. It's gonna be an Ashok. Probably bounces Ineos here. And sadly, Skybonder doesn't make abilities more expensive. We'll bounce it back to our hand, and then... Gust of Wind doesn't seem great. So, yeah, just gonna replay Ineos, take out Ashok. And hope there's no sweeper. And next turn we should be able to close out the game. Is it time for Niv Misset? Nope, Hydroid Crisis for four. So let's see. I guess I can give them Signets. Signet, Pump and Rally. Is that gonna be enough? Let's find out. So I should, in response to the ability, activate And they can have Signets, Steel Crisis, and then Rally. And yeah, that's 17. Sweet. So yeah, opponent was too scared to play their Niv Mizzets, and we still managed to beat them onto the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing Baral, Chief of Compliance, so Counterspell Tribal. I mean, we've got a 1-drop and a 2-drop, which isn't bad here, as we can apply some early pressure. Kira good against bounce spells. And a Freet also hits pretty hard. So if we can find a third land, this might not be so bad. Opponent passes. We'll attack, and then see what they have. So they're probably holding a counter spell. I guess we can give them a Kira to counter and then keep the Afrit, which is probably more valuable. Could also do nothing, but then they might have some other instance. And then keeping the Pegasus for when we can play it alongside something else in the same turn could be better. Now does Marauder remove all abilities? It does. So we can attack first and then they don't get the Baral discount anymore. So this is going to be an awkward second main favorable wins. But that's probably okay. Or I can play Freet. Since wins is easier to sneak into play later, I guess I can buy that too. Alright, uh, opponent's just gonna opt. Alright, so one card they could have here is like a Shark Typhoon to ambush Storm Tamer. So I could not attack with it and just send Marauder a Freet. Alright, they just bounce a Freet for one mana before 
the Marauder's effect takes place, and a Glimmer of Genius. Alright, at least they're tapped out again. So what do we want to resolve? I can go for Favorable Winds Pegasus or replay Freet. Favorable Winds Pegasus is a little bit better against another bounce effect. If Freet lines up a bit better against Brazen Borrower. Yeah, we'll replay Freet. Alright, land is good. So now I might just attack with a Freed since I don't want him ambushing Marauder with Brazen Borrower. Could also send Storm Tamer, which I'm okay trading for Borrower. Although again, Shark Typhoon could be an issue. Alright, that's a fine trade. And then, I guess we'll Pegasus. That resolved pretty quickly, so they might not have anything. Alright, and then can maybe play a Winds next turn. Yeah, the problem with Winds is that I can't play anything else this turn. Don't really want to tap out for Ineos. Could go for a main phase Angel of Sanctions. Or I can just attack and see what happens. I think I like attack, see what happens. Ooh, Torrential Gearhawk. Can get back, I guess, a Glimmer. At least it doesn't block anything. And then how do we feel about any else now? Or do we just play Angel Sanctions, get rid of Brawl? Don't care too much about Gearhulk. Yeah, I guess Sanctions, Brawl is okay. Opponent's at four. And my opponent explodes, sweet. Beating the Counterspell Tribal deck always feels nice. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Joda 5-color deck. Uh, our hand's okay, a bit lands heavy here, so hopefully we don't draw any more. And pick up some token makers that make some flyers to help enable Ineas. But being able to bounce Joda and set them back for a turn could be very useful. Alright, more bounce spells. Probably just Signet for now. Opponent's got her own signets. So we've got a few options. Just playing Aerial Responder might not be the worst idea. And then keep the bounce spells to bounce whatever they ramp into, like maybe a Joda next turn. It's gonna be a Cultivate. Eh, winged Words is nice. Start there. Could play Ineos, but I would prefer to play Ineos if we already have the required flyers in play. And then I can end of turn Flash and Borrower if we don't need to bounce anything. And then I can just steal their Joda potentially. Bone goes for Escape. So more ramp. Yeah, all this land-based ramp is making my bounce effects a little bit less exciting. So 
so my opponent has all the colors. I might just Angel of Sanctions to get rid of Signet instead of playing Ineas. Although we could trade a Falcon for Signet, I guess. I guess that's okay. Make it a little bit more difficult for the opponent to cast their spells and then can also bounce my Falcon to get it back. Alright, and the opponent concedes, so I guess they had some mana issues after we stole the Signets and yeah, we had more interaction and bounce effects coming up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Selvala, Heart of the Wilds deck, so some sort of ramp deck. Yeah, our hand's not bad. Probably gonna play Temple turn one and then turn two Signet into Sailor. And our opponent with a Once Upon a Time. That's a card I haven't seen in a while. Finds Gilded Goose, so yeah, they've got that one mana accelerant, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think we can bottom invocation since we already have deploy, so I'd rather find an extra land maybe. Turn to Silvala. I could upkeep the post Silvala so they can't tap it for mana, but I think going Signet plus Sailor's a little bit better. Can maybe just Geists to tap down Silvala indefinitely. Yeah, I think we gotta shut down the mana production. Could also keep up Lofty Denial. Could also go Deploy and then next turn Ineas to steal something. Which is also reasonable, although they get to make a ton of mana with Silvala here. So I think the play is just Dungeon Geists, tap it down. Signets. Is this a fight effect? Just an attack for five. And then getting to keep up deploy and our counter spell could be nice. Alright, Rex Sage kills Signet. It's not the end of the world. Can still go with our game plan here. I guess we don't get to play Healer's Hawk now. And then do I want to attack for three? And take two from Sage. Not really. Rishkar's expertise. Yeah, that's probably worth countering. Still want to hang on to deploy as opposed to tapping down champion. And then probably Hawk plus Deploy. Still probably staying back. Could technically also draw with a Spectral Sailor here. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, I guess they must not have had much in hand. And they were afraid of more counter spells, even though we were just gonna deploy and then play Ineas to steal their Steel Leaf Champion, which is a little ironic. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Yarok with a Desecrated deck. What do we think of this hand? It's a little bit on the slow side, but Warden means we maybe have a 4 mana Ineas. Yeah, hopefully we'll draw some more cheap flyers here. So our opponent's going to be playing a bunch of Enter the Battlefield triggers. So this would have been a matchup where Hushbringer would shine, but didn't end up including it. I'll play Skydiver. 
save favorable winds for later once we already have a board presence. Hit for two, play Warden. And then next turn I can play Responder plus favorable winds. And that maybe sets up Ineos if we draw a blue source. Alright, no blue mana. Could Angel of Sanctions Risen Reef, but I think I should just uh, be more aggressive. And maybe save Angel of Sanctions for Yarok. Also, if we get rid of the Risen Reef, then Yarok doesn't have any effect when it enters a battlefield, which could be worth it. Marshall's tempting too. Yeah, I think we marshal here. And then next turn, unless they've got a sweeper, they're dead. Alright, down to six. Six mana available. And a casualties of war. Yeah, it's pretty good. But they're still dead on board. Takes away all my blue mana. And my opponent explodes. So blue-white flyers isn't a bad choice in Historic Brawl. There's not too many flying blockers out there that you need to be worried about. And people also tend to play a lot differently when they expect Ineos to steal their best cards. So unless they've got a sweeper, which we luckily managed to avoid for the most part today, then uh, blue-white flyers can get the job done. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.